Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It is Saturday. It is July the 8th. We've got 24 hours until the markets are open again. And in this video, I want to give you my opinion about the volume profile. Uh, we're going to look at the ES and maybe have a look at the NQ with the volume profile on the chart. I want to tell you the advantages of using the volume profile, and I also want to tell you why you don't really need it and why it might actually be a hindrance to your learning. So the volume profile shows you uh, basically where the volume has been by price and it ignores time. On the right side of the chart you can see the yellow and blue lines here shows you by price how much volume was traded at that price and if you're using a dynamic volume profile it will change its appearance based on how much data is in is in your current frame so you can see that it's flipping around the red line is what's called the point of control it's the highest volume node on the visible range now volume profile theory works like this okay the theory is that the largest okay the largest volume your point of control should be uh, a dynamic point of resistance the other theory is that where there has been little trading, okay, these low, they call them low volume nodes, is where the market should rapidly reprice through. And I want to be completely fair and objective in this analysis rather than just bash on it. Um, it does do that, guys. Like, for the most part, it delivers this promise, okay? Uh, the volume profile will show you, for example, do you see how there was a long period of waiting and consolidation at, at that price? There's the high volume node. I mean, there it is, guys. There, I, I want to, you know, give it credit for what it does. The point of control does show you where there's been a lot of orders in the marketplace. Okay, it does sh point that out to you. The low volume nodes do tell you where price, you know, has been. Uh, there haven't been, there has not been so much trading offered between those prices, and so you would expect rapid repricing through. Uh, a low volume note. So I want to be fair. Now let's move on to why I don't use it, uh, why I will never use it, and why um, why I think that it is a distraction and it's not a necessary tool. So let me get into that. Number one, if you're using a dynamic volume profile, you will notice that as I move the visible data, okay, as I move the visible data, that volume profile is going to change. Okay, it's going to change where the point of control is. It's going to change what it's telling me. Um, and so basically, you would have to use a fixed range volume profile, or you would just have to accept that it's constantly flipping around. Number two, it is taking your eye away from what price is doing right now. Okay? At all times as a day trader, you need to be assessing what the market is doing right now, not 10 minutes ago, right now. And so having these big ass things on the right side of your chart are very distracting to what is important and what is important is what price is doing right now okay that's what's important the other thing is the, the second drawback to using volume profile not only is it a distraction okay not only does it if it's dynamic it's going to change its appearance based on the visible data in the range as you can see um, Let's get on to the second drawback of the volume profile and why I do not use it. There is nothing here in this information that is not available by price. What do I mean by that? Guys, I know that this area has efficiently traded. Now, volume profile people don't use those terms because they don't think that way, but I think in terms of computer science. I think in terms of liquidity and inefficiency, and I think in terms of Michael Huddleston. Guys, they're not my concepts. They're Michael Huddleston or Inner Circle Traders concepts. So, but I know if most all of the candles are overlapping, yep, there were there was the market really gave a long time there for people to either buy or sell. Okay, the market was allowing the quote unquote the liquidity to build up above and to build up below. And then the market makers, the powers that be, the algorithm itself, right? I believe that the markets are basically um, artificial intelligence or they're driven by artificial intelligence. Um, look, what I would say is happening up here is, yep, the AI is allowing, there's liquidity up here just in case they want to go run that. 
and there was liquidity down here, and they decided to go run the sell side to make the market fair and efficient. Okay. I didn't, you know, I knew that at that area, I could probably tell you that without even looking at the volume profile, yeah, that's probably a point of control, right? I don't believe that I need to see this big-ass line on my chart and these big-ass bars on the right to tell me, yes, the market was efficiently trading here. It, it hung there for quite a long time. It was allowing liquidity to build up above current market price and below current market price. Nothing about the volume profile needed. Let's talk about low volume nodes. Let's talk about where the market has thinly traded. Okay, right there. Now notice, there's our thinnest tradest point right there. What is that, guys? What do we call that? It's a sell side imbalance, buy side inefficiency. The market was only offered in this current fractal of price, it was only offered to the sell side. Okay, and therefore it was buy side inefficient. Now the volume profile, to its credit, tells you basically the same thing, right? Only one side of the marketplace was offered. Okay? But I don't need the volume profile to tell me that. It's extraneous. It's like book map. It's unnecessary and it's distracting. Okay? That's part number two. Let's talk about the drawback number three of, of book map. So just to recover what we've talked about. Number one, the volume profile is visually distracting. Number two, a dynamic volume profile is going to change the data appearance, uh, ex, uh, appearance on the right side of the chart depending on the visible range of data that is in your screen, is on your screen. And so it's going to be difficult for you to keep consistent trade ideas because it's going to change. Okay. Second drawback with the volume profile is that it is extraneous. It is, does not tell you, this data does not tell you anything that the naked price chart is not telling you. Does that make sense? It's superfluous. It's unnecessary. Third drawback of the volume profile. Guys, time is a huge factor. You can't ignore time. No, I do not like uh, uh, Renko charts, tick charts, whatever, that are ignoring the time. No, absolutely not, guys. Are you kidding? The market books based off of time. Look, that's why we have regular trading hour sessions. Now, look at that, guys. Where does... Look at that. Look, look, the volume profile, if you get it to the right area, there it is, guys. It lines up with the regular trading hours gap, just above it. No. Um, it, it's, um, you have to, it, it ignores time, guy. guys. You can't ignore time. Time is a huge driving factor. It's, it's arguably the, the most important aspect of price is time. The market does certain things at certain times, okay? Because it's driven, in my opinion, by artificial intelligence, except for the few moments that it is driven by manual intervention, for example, during economic releases. Otherwise, I believe that the markets are already fully automated and driven by AI. I do not believe that the market is driven by human beings. I do not believe that orders matter at all. I don't believe that volume is real or matters. I think that payment for order flow schemes have essentially made it so that only about 5 to 10% of orders are actually paired against each other. And I think that what you're seeing on the chart is artificial intelligence already. And it probably has been that way for years. That's my opinion, okay? I have no documents in front of me to tell me that. But I can look at the chart and, guys, it's mathematically perfect. It's unbelievably perfect. It's artificial intelligence in per perfect when you know what you're looking for, okay? So that's my opinion, guys. No hard evidence of that. But the volume profile is ignoring the time. And, and guys, no, you can't. In my opinion, that is, a, that is a, a killer to the volume profile. Why I will never use it. All right, I will never use this on my chart. It is, number one, visually distracting. Number two, if it's a dynamic volume profile, it's going to change its appearance based on how much visible data is in the range. And number three, and the really the nail in the coffin to volume profile, is it ignores time. Okay? It ignores the time. And so, guys, in this video, I just want to recap what we went over. I went over my opinion on volume profile. I went over why I do not use it. I went over the three reasons why I think uh, that, it, that it is an ineffective tool. Number one, okay, it's visually distracting. Number two, it, it does not tell you any information that the price does, time and price does not already tell you. And then uh, 
number three, it ignores time. Number three, it ignores time. Okay? And time is a huge factor. So, anyways, guys, that's my opinion on the volume profile uh, and why I you will not see it on my chart. Bye.